it's a welcome opportunity for the Government of Canada to speak about energy efficiency and to congratulate the Canadian Energy Efficiency Alliance on nearly 20 years of promoting and supporting energy efficiency in Canada. Your organization has certainly helped Canada become a leader in responsible energy use through energy efficiency. The International Energy Agency has identified Canada as tied for second with the United Kingdom and right behind Germany as leading the globe in energy efficiency improvements. So we all know about our highest per capita energy use. We're the third highest in the world and I think uh, one of the uh, other high ones is uh, sort of a typo because of the way energy is delivered in Europe. So we have very high per capita energy use and, and everybody knows about that and we work hard to overcome that. But the fact that energy efficiency improvements lead so many other countries means that we are working at reducing that energy use and making it more efficient. Over the period of 1990 to 2010, the amount of energy consumed per unit of GDP reduced by about 21%. And the majority of those improvements are down to energy efficiency. I'm proud that the International Energy Agency recognized our improvements in ranking us second in the world. And I'm proud that they recognize the Government of Canada's achievements as well in trying to support a robust energy efficiency market in Canada. Canada is a leader in energy production. We have the third largest proven oil reserves in the world. We are the second biggest producers of uranium and the third largest generator of electricity. We are committed to the responsible development of our resources, which create jobs and economic growth. At the same time, we're also interested in protecting our environment. Therefore, along with responsible resource development comes responsible energy use through energy efficiency. Between 1990 and 2010, energy efficiency improved by 25%. Et les bénéfices économiques sont formidables. Grâce à la capacité énergétique, les épargnes uh, sont 32 milliards de dollars. So thanks to energy efficiency, energy savings were worth $32 billion to Canadians in 2010, based on actions taken over the last two decades. That's $15 billion of energy costs avoided for business and industry and $17 billion of energy costs avoided for consumers. In fact, consumers who choose an energy efficient home, who buy energy efficient appliances, and who drive an energy efficient automobile can save $3,000 a year on their energy bill compared to their neighbors. From a, a more business or institutional perspective, the Timmins and District Hospital in Northern Ontario installed new lighting an energy management system and a more efficient boiler plant and they're now saving half a million dollars on their energy bill which was a hundred thousand more than they had anticipated so all of that money goes straight back into patient care a pork producer here in Ontario made hundred and seventy five thousand dollar investment in a more efficient set of refrigeration units and they reduced their energy bills by forty percent they were they used the money the savings from those investments to expand their business so now their electrical bills are actually the same as they were before the investment, but they have a 40% greater capacity to do business. So the impacts on the economy of energy efficiency are twofold. They come from the direct spending of the energy user when they go out and buy the energy efficient products, so they procure the energy efficient services, but there's actually an impact that's three times greater when you count in what they do with the energy savings three times greater impact than the direct spending is the impact of the energy savings and the spending they do with that. Working with our provincial and territorial governments, we continue to advance energy efficiency and responsible energy use in Canada. Many of you are aware of the National Energy Code for Buildings, which was introduced in 2011. It was led by Natural Resources Canada, Natural Resources Council, and the provinces and territory. And at this moment, all provinces and two territories are in the process of adopting or adapting that code, which is 25% more stringent than the previous. The one territory who I didn't mention is uh, adapting a similar code. Work is already underway on the next code. So this will bring continuous improvement in the minimum performance required of buildings across Canada as we move forward. And code 2011 is the most stringent code in North America that applies to a cold weather climate. 
By 2020, which is just six years away, the savings from implementing the code are estimated by Natural Resources Canada to be worth $350 million a year in energy savings to those buildings. The Government of Canada also continues to review and update energy efficiency regulations. We have 47 in place at this moment, and I'm just going to highlight one set of them, similar to comments that Elizabeth made about set-top boxes. Um, you're probably all familiar with standby losses, the energy that's used when a piece of equipment is turned off, also known as phantom or vampire energy use, which are terms that I like to use to uh, increase people's attention and interest in energy efficiency. These have been estimated as much as $1.5 billion in energy goes to standby losses each year across the economy. Natural Resources Canada put standards in place in 2010 and again in 2012 to reduce the standby energy requirements of televisions and other electronics to less than one watt down from as much as four watts. However, this is a challenge. As our products become more and more connected through the internet or through satellites, as computers and smartphones and appliances talk to one another, so you can use your smartphone to dial up your thermos or your toaster's talking to your refrigerator, um, probably by the end of decade, most appliances are forecasted to have some level of connectivity. While this is great for improving the functions that we enjoy, the energy challenges are considerable. And so NRCAN, working with other countries as consumers and producers of electronics, um, are working hard to find ways to address the standby challenges, which are getting more significant as networking increases. With respect to greenhouse gas emissions, the transportation sector currently generates about a quarter of Canada's greenhouse gas emissions, which is why the Government of Canada took action by introducing world-class fuel efficiency standards. By 2025, new cars will consume 50% less fuel and 50% less greenhouse gases than 2008 models. And this will result in savings of about $1,000 per vehicle, as estimated by Environment Canada, who manages those regulations. Environment Canada also estimates that Canada's 2020 greenhouse gas emissions are 128 megatons lower than if these actions had not taken place. And that's equivalent to about 37 coal-fired um, electricity power plants. Where regulations are concerned, we have to take into account the fact that we are a trading nation and we have to be very cognizant of what our trading partners are doing, particularly our largest trading partner, the United States. We're working with the United States to align our codes and our standards where it makes sense. We're working through two initiatives to do this. A Canada-US Clean Energy Dialogue, in which Natural Resources Canada and Environment Canada participates on a number of projects, and the Canada-US Regulatory Cooperation Council, which was announced by President Obama and Prime Minister Harper in 2011. Uh, the Regulatory Cooperation of Council has already addressed 29 areas of standards alignment and they're looking at their second wave of work going forward. They undertook a consultation last summer and of all of the energy comments received, there were a dozen and a half or something in that order, the majority of them were about energy efficiency and the majority of those were about aligning, aligning energy efficiency standards. Canadians understand that energy efficiency leaves more money in their pockets. That's why we deliver the Energy Star program, which most of you are familiar with. And last year's survey conducted by Gondal for the Canadian Energy Efficiency Alliance indicated that Energy Star was the most recognized product in the marketplace dealing with energy efficiency. More than 65 products are covered by the label and more than 70% of Canadians recognize it to make their purchasing decisions. On the business side, companies know that using Energy Star is a quick and easy way for consumers to find the most efficient of appliances or products. Whirlpool manufactures hundreds of different models and over 80% of them are ENERGY STAR blended, as does Geldwin Windows and Doors, one of the largest window and door manufacturers, and over 80% of their products are labeled with ENERGY STAR. The new business attitudes survey that will be released today by the Canadian Energy Efficiency Alliance indicates that close to three quarters of business and more than three quarters of builders um, believe that energy efficiency is a priority for their organizations. At the same time, concerns about upfront costs and the investments required are clear. So the Government of Canada is using different programs to try and address the cost issue and the awareness issue. 
Some of you may be familiar with uh, the adaptation of the American Energy Star benchmarking program that we adopted last summer in Canada. In fact, one of my fellow panel members is uh, representing the race to reduce. Roger Johnson from the TD Bank Group um, is representing the race to reduce, which represents 30% of Toronto's office space. They're using Portfolio Manager benchmarking tool. For those of you who don't know, it permits a building owner the opportunity to compare their building's performance with industry standards, as well as to track their building's energy performance over time. The reference database that we have to support the benchmarking tool has 400,000 buildings in it. That's a statistically significant sample um, based on a StatCan survey that allows us to have a really good picture of what the Canadian building sector looks like. After launching this tool last August, um, we now have the race to reduce. City of Halifax recently committed to put all of its buildings in the tool. And we have six of the top largest property developers in Canada. In total, we have 7,200 buildings inscribed in the tool already, um, buildings from every province in Canada, and that represents 12% of the stock. The Americans are at 40% of their stock, but they've been at this for 10 years, so I'm, I'm really enthused with the uh, uptake of this tool in its early days. From a private driver perspective, Natural Resources Canada publishes the Fuel Consumption Guide, which allows consumers to compare the ratings of any model of car or light truck on the market. <coughs> and in February, as one of his last acts as the Minister of Natural Resources Canada, now Finance Minister Joe Oliver, announced that we were updating our test methodology, which is what you see on the label when you look at cars and light trucks. And it used to represent city and highway um, ratings for fuel consumption, and now the test methodology will also take into consider air conditioning, um, fast driving, and cold weather, all of which seem to apply in Canada. Looking beyond our borders, um, expanding economies in the Asia Pacific and other regions offer opportunities to sell our energy resources, but they also offer opportunities for us to sell our expertise in energy efficiency. The International Energy Agency estimates that energy efficiency is a $300 billion a year global industry. And in fact, when I first started quoting their study in speeches, I noticed that it was a much lower number and they are updating that rapidly as countries such as China and India, Brazil, South Africa and others aggressively invest in energy efficiency as a means to manage growth in a responsible and cost-effective manner. We just finished an assessment in, at Natural Resources Canada about the size of the energy efficiency business in Canada. And we estimated that there's 100,000 people employed directly in energy efficiency related work and another 500,000 whose jobs are more tangentially related to energy efficiency. So this is everything from the manufacturing to the contractors to the utilities to the plant and building managers who have responsibilities to reduce energy use in a building. The Canadian Energy Efficiency Alliance as an organization and the member organizations of the alliance have an important role to play in promoting and encouraging and realizing the benefits of energy efficiency in Canada. The Government of Canada welcomes this support in, in helping all Canadians understand the choices they have with respect to how they use energy. Félicitations à l'Alliance de l'Efficacité Énergétique de Canada. Congratulations to the Canadian Energy Efficiency Alliance for this event. Thank you for adding to the knowledge of energy efficiency through the release of this second survey on attitudes about energy efficiency. And I look forward to continued collaborations with you. Thank you very much.